My knees aren't too brilliant at the moment, so I'm looking for tasks I can do sitting down at the kitchen table. And one of them is to take the first steps on the path to building Matthias Wandel's bandsaw, something I've been wanting to do for months and months and months. A few years ago, when I was doing quite a bit of writing, the office had quite a few shelves, and now it doesn't. So these IKEA shelves are going spare. And Matthias used IKEA shelving in one of his bandsaws, so I think that's an auspicious start. So I've bought a set of the plans and uh, I've begun printing them out and gluing them together to get cutting templates for a cutting plan. And here, for example, is an even layer upright. Oddly, a lot of the single diagrams, or most of the single diagrams, seem to be provided in PING, PNG, Portable Network Graphic Format. And uh, I don't know if it's just my copy of Fireworks, but I can't find a way to print them out actual size. They print out at whatever size they please. But uh, they are also provided as PDFs, and uh, I have used those. And on my printer and my computer, they come out at exactly 100%. So uh, off I go with the glue stick. I've finished printing out, sticking together, and cutting up. And I have my templates, and I'm starting on my cutting plan. As you probably know, the clever thing about the frame of this bandsaw is a sandwich of alternating layers that form multiple mortise and tenon joints. And I've printed out and I'm laying out an odd layer here. Now this gap doesn't actually exist because there's actually two of those, but a couple of problems have come to light. These make it slightly more awkward to lay out because the grain direction has to run along the hypotenuse of these little gusset triangles here. Well, as one might expect, there isn't enough wood in a long board here to get everything out for one layer. And unfortunately, I've discovered that these short boards here from some uh, narrow shelving are not quite as thick as the boards from the wider shelving. If uh, that was left uncorrected, then there would be steps in the sandwiching and that wouldn't work. You wouldn't get good joints. And this is the thicker one, so all the planing would be on the bigger one, which is a bit of a nuisance as I don't have a mechanical planer. So I'm probably going to have to find a few more of these uh, longer boards and hope that they're all the same thickness, uh, which I think I can do, and uh, avoid using these shorter boards in the frame sandwich at least. Another problem that's come to light is, I should have remembered this, these are finished with Danish oil and the glue is not going to stick to them particularly well. So I've got to go through all of these boards with a scraper and get that Danish oil polymer off. So I'm just checking all these boards for flatness and for twist. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit, but I don't want a vast amount. And then I have to remove these metal fittings. The shelves all get suspended on pins that sit here. And uh, there's a variety of means. These shelves must have been bought in three separate tranches. There's a variety of means by which these are held on. Uh, but these are the easiest uh, with some uh, Phillips screws here. And I think I found enough of these longer boards, the slightly uh, thicker ones, uh, all at around 19.7, certainly close enough to laminate together without giving me steps. Here's another style of fitting where some, what would you call these, tangs with points have been punched down from the metal into the wood. You could theoretically cut that and then take that out fairly smoothly, but um, these edges are not going to be any good for anything, so there's little point in that. These ones have pretty much the same thing, except it's covered, and that tang must be punched through from above through the wood. There's no hole underneath, and you can't cut that. You simply have to wrench this out.
Okay, a lot of scraping to go then. So I've got my scraping station set up. I've got my board dogged against the wall with the vice, woodworking vice dog here. I've got my scraper, card scraper, cabinet scraper. I've got my mill file to square the top back up again. I've got my metalworking vise held onto the bench over here with some hold fasts. I've got my diamond plates here ready to uh, smooth off the squared off top. And the last thing to do to make things even quicker is to put together a little block to hold the scraper so that I can make sure I file square and put the hook on with a three or four degree angle. Now if you've got a fine kerf saw and a steady hand and eye you can simply take a block and partially saw your way through it, about four fifths perhaps. Uh, I can't do that, I've got a couple of blocks that I've squared off and I'm going to put a couple of pin sliders over at this end and just for fanciness I'm going to separate those two with a little spring there. Then when you're ready to put the edge back on that it goes into the vise here and is clamped down and you can have it poking up a tiny little bit there for squaring off with the mill file and you have it poking up a little bit more when you're doing your three or four degree angle to put the hook edge back onto the card scraper. We've got this handy little trick here which I mentioned in the previous video which was introduced to me as the luthier's trick. Instead of using double sided tape or anything more complicated you simply put masking tape or painter's tape on your two pieces that you'd like to stick together and then on the one side you put super glue making sure you keep the nozzle clear and then on the other side you put kicker or activator Then you pop the two together and wait a moment and that'll hold it together and it'll be easy to get off. Now to drill a couple of holes. The production line is underway, having checked that the board is reasonably flat and having unscrewed or wrenched away the metalwork from the edges here, I set to, to scraping and I find I'm getting about one and a half to two sides per scraper revitalising. And that's just starting to lose the hook. There are those who use a scraper like that, but I can't see what I'm doing, given where the bench is, so I'm using it the other way around. And uh, once the hook from the edge of the scraper 
has gone. There are those that say you can put it back again with a second treatment of just lip and hook, but I don't find that to be the case. I take my handy block, put the scraper in, just get a little bit showing. This is so that when I file the top, I keep the file square. Take the mill file, which is a single file. The teeth are single cut, not double cut. There's no diamond pattern on here, just straight lines. Square off the top by doing that 90 degrees. Then we need to remove the score lines, if any, with our diamond stones. Again, keeping it like that so that you've got an idea that you're straight, 90 degree. First of all on the thousand grit. Then the 1200 grit. Then take the burrs off. You can't hold it down because then you'll just deburr where your fingers are. You need to press it down like that. Oh, that's not bad. And again on the 1200. Having got your edge square and deburred, there are those that say the next step is to form a lip by drawing your burnishing tool flat like that. And then having drawn a lip sort of pointing that way, the next step is to form it into a hook. But I haven't found this to be particularly effective. I've also read that it's carrying out work hardening. So from smoothing off the burrs. I then go back into the block, but this time leaving a little bit more protruding because we're now going to want to form the hook by drawing the burnishing tool across at a three or four or five degree angle here. And then either you just form the hook directly or if you did succeed in getting a lip pointing upwards, you're gonna roll that lip over into the hook. And then we should be ready to go again. I now have nine boards reasonably flat, all pretty close to each other in thickness, between 0.2 and 0.3 and sometimes better than that of a millimeter. And I reckon nine should be enough. There are six main laminations plus some extra pieces here. And I think I can get uh, two laminations out of three pieces. Separate ones like this, which forms one final brace at the edge here, I might take out of wobbly boards. I'm sure I can find a flat section big enough, for example, for that. And then we've got some other little pieces out here. 